Hey guys, today I've got my five top tips for new runners. Ed Bud here, and my channel normally specializes in running shoe reviews, but I've got something a little different for you today. Thanks for visiting the channel. If you haven't done so already, please click the subscribe button and the bell for notifications below so you're informed when new videos are launched and hit that thumbs up to give the video a like, it'll be most appreciated. So something struck me like a bolt from the blue the other day while I was out training. It was a quick five mile effort at around about seven minutes, 30 seconds per mile pace. Easy myself back into training. I had very tight left glute recently and also lower back's not been 100%. So being sensible, listening to that body. You gotta remember your body is your vehicle through life. You've gotta look after it. Now is not the time to want to have to take your body to a mechanic. While I was out running, I noticed that I'm seeing lots and lots more runners everywhere. And I'm not just talking a handful, I'm talking tens, hundreds. Everybody's getting out of their house to utilize their one exercise per day. And it got me thinking, what are my top five tips for new runners? It'd be fantastic if some of the more experienced runners out there who view the channel could post some of their tips and advice in the comments section below. I'd much appreciate it. Just to break those down at the start, number one is preparation. So preparing yourself and your body to get out there and run. Number two is making sure you've got some reasonable gear, some stuff that's not gonna cause you any injury and is gonna help you get some enjoyment out of running. Number three is when you're running, actually getting at some reasonable paces and effort levels so that you're not overdoing things. Number four is sustainability. So making sure you're running at a sustainable tempo. And then you can add in number five, which is setting some goals, setting some targets for yourself in the future. So tip one is preparation. The last thing you're gonna to want to be doing is heading out running on a very full stomach. So make sure you leave some reasonable time before when you perhaps eat breakfast, plan out when you're gonna go out and make sure there's a reasonable amount of time for your body to start to digest some of that food. Quite a lot of people really enjoy heading out very early on, even before they've had breakfast. Uh, it doesn't work too well for me, that one. I'm the sort of guy who gets up in the morning and I've got to eat stuff. I'm like, ravenous. I need to eat something to sort of get myself going. I've got quite a fast metabolism, so that really isn't an option for me. So it's making sure you eat at a reasonable time. Your body needs time to, you know, process that bag of crisps or whatever you've eaten the night before, or that huge slab of lemon cake that was particularly enjoyable. When I first started out running, I found that spending a little bit of time doing some very light dynamic stretches and range of motion exercises really helped. Some of us don't have time to do some long warm ups, so doing some stretching beforehand can really help when we get out there. We feel a little bit more nimble, feel a little bit more mobile and we can get something out of the run. Can even help after the run as well in terms of recovery. But when I say light dynamic stretches, I mean very, very light. You don't wanna be moving around too much beyond your typical limits. That can cause a lot of problems. I'm no doctor, these are literally just my tips. Be very careful when doing any stretching or any range of motion exercises. It's all about making sure that you're just a little bit more mobile. Always use common sense, there's some fantastic YouTubers out there who have covered lots of different stretching routines like that. Hasfit are particularly good. I'll stick a link to them in the description. They've got masses of great videos, which you can all do in your home, which is where we are a lot of the time right now, right? Eating a really healthy, balanced diet also is gonna help massively. This can be a time right now during this lockdown where we actually rethink really about what we're eating, what are we putting into ourselves, you know, what are we fueling ourselves with? I've certainly found that we're eating a hell of a lot better in my household since the lockdown. Lots more fruit, lots more vegetables, lower fat foods, avoiding alcohol, and just drinking a lot more water. All of those things can be really beneficial to us, not just as runners, but as people too. On to tip two now, which is all about gear. So I think something to remember about running gear and equipment is that every individual is different. That's what makes the world a wonderful place, right? Something that might work for somebody may not necessarily work for something else, certainly with running shoes and things like that. So do keep that in mind when you're coming up with a selection of gear that you can use for running. Now I'm a bit of a shoe hound. I've got hundreds of pairs of running shoes, too many probably, but you don't need a super expensive pair of running shoes to get into running and start to enjoy it. I picked up these Reebok Float Ride Energy running shoes the other day online for 29 pounds. It's a ridiculously good deal. They normally retail about 65, 70 pounds, something like that, but they're fantastic, really versatile, and they can 
benefit anybody. Same with these New Balance Beacons. This is the version one of the Beacon. It's crazy light and again, a very versatile shoe. This was about 35 pounds, I think. So as you can see, you don't need to spend lots and lots of money to get some enjoyment out of this sport or pastime or whatever you want to call it. As long as those shoes are comfortable for you, they will work. Just make sure they don't slip around in the heel, that the fit is good, the lockdown over the top of your foot is good. They're all about providing some underfoot protection and some cushion as your feet are striking the floor. Later on down the line, you can leap into the wild world of running shoes. There's hundreds, thousands of different varieties and pairs and types. But as long as you've got something that's going to work for you, that's comfortable, has good lockdown and provide some protection, you're good to go. With running shoes, obviously gait analysis could be used. Obviously it's hard to do that right now. You can't go into a running shoe store and get your running gait analyzed. It's just not possible. That analysis could look for specific issues in terms of your running mechanics and they can then advise on which shoes you could go for. It's a couple of different types. So you've got neutral kind of shoes, which kind of anybody can wear. And then there are more stability based shoes if there's a specific issue within your running mechanics. Now there's lots and lots of discussion about whether those two different types are really needed. It's very much down to the individual. I think you have to consider who you are and how you run. And sometimes it's very difficult to ascertain actually which type of shoe is best for you. It may be that you need information from one source yourself and then from another source, somebody else who's perhaps looked at your running mechanics to be able to come to some sort of conclusion that works for you. Do look out for some sales. A lot of manufacturers have some fantastic deals. Reebok, for example, had a massive sale the other day. It was almost half price, some of the shoes. Adidas have always got good sales. Nike throw some stuff up as well, maybe 20, 30% off. So do keep your eyes out. Keep your eyes out, keep your eyes open even. That would be better. Then you'll be able to see the deals. Bit of a money saver if you've got some football shirts at home, maybe you haven't worn them in a while. A lot of those shirts are made from the same materials that running tops are like, like this one, for example. This Nike one's made a dry fit material, the same as some of those football shirts I've got. For my sins, I'm an Arsenal fan and I've got loads of them. So maybe you can utilize one of those rather than going out and buying yourself some additional gear that you don't need right now. That'll save you some money in the long run. One important thing to consider is the climate in your local area. That's gonna very much dictate as to what sort of gear you're gonna to want to wear and feel comfortable in while you're out running. It could be, I was gonna say at the moment that you might wanna wear vests, shorts and stuff. It's absolutely hammering it down with rain right now as I'm recording this. But recently it's been extremely warm. Yesterday, I think it was up to about 18, 19 degrees when I was out running. So it was vest and shorts weather then. If you're in a much cooler climate, obviously you're gonna need perhaps to layer up, maybe use some running leggings or some tights. Don't forget, as you first go out on your run, you're gonna be feeling a lot cooler than you will about 10 minutes in. Your body's gonna warm up, that blood's gonna be pumping through your veins, and you might wish then that you actually wore something entirely different than when you first went out. So that's just something to bear in mind. Use your Amazon Echo, use your Google Assistant, use your Apple Assistant as well. I shan't say the name in case it triggers all your devices off. Ask it what the weather's gonna be like. Talk to it. It will tell you lots and lots of useful information. It might tell you chance of rain. It might tell you how warm it's gonna be or how cool it's gonna be at a certain time. This could be a really useful function for you. So tip number three now. So you're out running. What sort of paces and efforts should you be looking at? So lots of people, when they first get into running, they really favor a walking running model. So you walk for part of the activity and then run and then walk to sort of like an active recovery, I guess and then run again, and so on, so on. People have found this method to be very, very successful. It's certainly one of the most popular methods that I've seen. What I do see is though people just go out far too fast, and then they kind of hit a wall, they get to a point, and they have to completely stop. Of course, if you're just stopping, well, yes, you are gonna recover, but it's much better to be active while you're recovering. More able runners will utilize a similar method where they use intervals. So they'll do a very fast section and then pull the pace right back, but keep moving. So they're recovering during those much slower sections. It might be that you wanna do a few hundred meters of running and then a few hundred meters of walking, whatever works for you. You have to work with your body. How are you feeling? Start off slow and then build up. You can build up the distance, build up the time that you're out over a long period of time. That way you'll stay healthy. 
If you try and ratchet things up to the fifth gear straight away, you're just going to get injured and you're not going to get the enjoyment you could get out of running. It's all about minimizing the chance of injury. So start off over shorter distances, lower paces, and then keep getting out there. Tip four is all about sustainability. So once you've got out there, you've managed to maybe run for 15, 20 minutes, maybe even get up to 5K, 3.1 miles. How do you sustain that? Make sure you have some days off during the week. Maybe a couple of days off, rest days where you don't go running. It's really important. It helps the body to recover, to rebuild. Running can be quite an addictive pastime. People really love it. They feel really bad when they don't get out. Maybe some peer pressure there. Don't worry about everybody else. Concentrate on yourself, enjoying the experience. If Joe Bloggs can run faster than you, it doesn't matter. None of that matters. This is all about enjoying using your body to keep your running sustainable. It's a good idea to sort of plan out when you're gonna go running. Look at varying your routes as well. So you start to include some inclines and some declines. You'll start to figure out that you probably don't really like running up hills. Some crazy people out there do, and that's great. I'm actually becoming one of them. I really enjoy running up hills now. I kind of have to where I live. It's very hilly. We're in a big bowl. There's a huge bowl surrounding the whole town, and there's loads of hills here. So being realistic about your paces and the distances that you're running will help you to sustain that over a longer period of time. So my fifth and final tip is all about goals and targets. Now, running at the moment can be a very individual lonely kind of pastime. Here in the UK, we're not allowed to run with people from other households. Uh, we're only allowed to run with people that are perhaps in our household. And if we're out there running, we've got to keep over two meters distance between us and everybody. So it kind of makes it quite hard to have any sort of competitive edge. Lots of people are doing virtual races and things like that. But what I would do is focus on creating some challenges for yourself. It could be that there's a specific route that you really enjoy. Keep some logs of times that it's taken you to get from A to B and back again. You don't need any expensive gear to do that. You can use your watch. You can use perhaps a smartwatch you've already got. You could even use your phone. We've all got smartphones these days and there's loads of applications there. Things like Strava, for example, which are free to use and they're pretty accurate as well. This can really, really help your progress and act as a carrot to keep you motivated. Remember though, with running, it's not a constant upwards kind of process. Some days you'll feel really great and you'll smash out your distance in the best time and the next day you feel terrible, like a steam train without any coal. But you've just got to keep in there, stick with it and keep working at it. You'll find within running that the communities in your local area, once we get back out there again, but also online, are incredibly supportive. Setting a goal of certain times or miles can really help to progress your running. Do remember tip four though, sustainability. Do be reasonable and sensible about those goals. Just keep remembering to enjoy the process of getting there rather than getting there. I'm always saying that to my students, enjoy the process of learning. If you can enjoy that, you'll be a great learner. Remember that your actions and your lives make you who you are rather than certificates or medals. So that's all of my top five tips for new runners. I hope you've enjoyed the show today, guys. Those more experienced viewers, I'd really, really appreciate it if you'd post up some of your tips for those new runners in the comments section below. We're a big family here on the Edbud channel, and it'd be great to see some of the more experienced people chime in with some of their advice and some of their tips. That's about all for today, guys. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video. I almost forgot a musical interlude. In these troubled times, I've gone right back to an earthy and very pure sounding album, that of Neil Young's Harvest. This one came out in the tail end of the 60s and is a fantastic country album with some of Neil's best work on this one. Songs like Heart of Gold, Out on the Weekend and Words as well, just brilliant songs. There's some acoustic moments and some quite raw electric tracks too. Everyone knows Heart of Gold, that's one of those classic tunes with a beautiful harmonica and very poignant words. Neil Young's always been one of my favourites. I think I've got pretty much every one of his albums. Do check it out though if you haven't heard it before. Fantastic Harvest from Neil Young. That's about all for me for today guys. I do appreciate you watching through to the end of the video. Please hit the subscribe button and click the bell down below for notifications of when new videos are launched. 
give the video a thumbs up and make sure you share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.